European markets climb higher as Eurozone finance ministers promise to prop up deteriorating European banks. And U.S. stocks trying to recapture Tuesday's late-day 400 Dow Point rally. And Apple says it's what's inside the phone that counts. The company doesn't unveil an iPhone 5, but only an iPhone 4S, hoping that good guts is enough to wow consumers. I'm Alex Steele, and the morning call starts right now. Good morning. I'm Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer with T3Live.com. And I'm Alex Steele with The Street, and together we bring you the morning call Netso Day on Tuesday. Dow rallies almost 400 points in the last hour of trading. Yes, there was that FT article that said that you're going to have EU leaders kind of recapitalize European banks. But other than that, there were no specifics. Nothing fundamentally has changed. We saw a downgrade of Italy. So was this really just short covering? It could have been a lot of things, but right now what we know is you had a big bullish reversal. A lot of people call it different names. I call it an outside day, meaning you break lows and you close strong. That changes the composure a little bit. Not a lot. Not, not like go out and buy stocks with both hands. Just relieve some of the pressure off the markets because what it did is it, it got people stopped out of their stock. When we broke 1101, people said, oh, I'm done here. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. So they sold. And then shorts that actually got crowded and pressed under there, not knowing that we just went from almost, what, 1190 down 100 handles into that area. That's why we said, you know, cover into 1070, 1075. That's what my plan was yesterday. You know, not press because we were down like 971 on the mm -hmm. McClellan mm -hmm. oscillator, which we've only been more oversold than that one time, and that was the August 8th low. So it was like an oil slick, and whatever the catalyst was, it created a squeeze, and now we need to measure the action the next two to five days to see if there's any commitment or continuation. So while you're measuring the action, how do you trade? Because, you know, you can't chase when you have a rally and you can't chase when you have a short, basically, <laughs> right? So, so which way do you go now? Well, it's, it's all about your timing. So if you last week started to get short around 11.50 and you added through 11.20, you were able to cover down to 10.75, 10.80. You know, yesterday, if you were looking for a long as, it, as it, the rally happened, which was hard. You know, I had a segment yesterday, I had some longs on after covering. I'm like, you know what, I think we're over, over, oversold enough. So I tried to be long Apple, LVS, Morgan Stanley, even some of the banks. And I was away from my computer for an hour and I got stopped out. So I didn't enjoy that rally. So guys like me who are flat are like, uh-oh, am I going to miss something here? So we're all sort of in the same boat. Of we're, looking for good levels to go long if we're able to pull back a little bit, but you don't want to chase up a couple handles. Exactly, right. but you don't want it to pull back too much because then it'll violate those retracement rules. So I like to see at least... 60 or 70 percent of yesterday's move hold that'll show some commitment and then if we get some kind of follow through in the next four to seven sessions then it's a complexion change right now it's just an oversold bounce that you could have made a lot of money or lost a lot of right, money all right so let's go to the chart and look at those levels you're going to watch it to see how you're going to trade today on and off there we go right to, right right to the s p <laughs> okay obviously head and shoulders top that's where we broke this was our lower range that we were maneuvering okay we did i was talking about last week around 11.50 this is when the short started, and then obviously going down to the low of 1074, that's a big range. Hard to be shorting down here after such a move, okay? So we did have a red dog reversal, which the strategy is, which you all know by now, is once we get back above the previous low of, what was it, 1098, you're then a buyer. And if you did so, you made 23 handles and you're enjoying this up open. I would look to see if 1140 caps this rally. If 1140 is resistance, mm -hmm. you know, then it could pause, but if we start pulling in, I would think that we have to at least hold 1105 to 1101 to show that this just wasn't a one-day wonder. All right, and then talking about composure change, I definitely want to talk about gold. Scott, let me tell you what I'm noticing here. First off, we have gold rallying in overnight trading over in Asia, strong physical demand, premiums are the highest since February in Singapore. These are big deals, right? Then 4 a.m., boom, European hmm. markets and U.S. markets really drag the price lower. To me, that says that fundamentally nothing's really changed and that this is technical trading, perhaps profit taking, margin calls and all that. How would you be thinking about gold? So there's, there's a lot of forces at work because gold is traded around the world overnight. So there's, like, you could be right intraday and wrong overnight, right overnight, wrong intraday. So obviously I, I only trade intraday because I have to sleep at night. It's been long days. So <laughs> I come in and I look to see the action. So right now mm -hmm. gold itself, the GLD is down about 80 cents. There's a new lower range being established in gold that traders are trading against. We broke that 1800 and now we're hovering above 1600. I think it's very important to watch this range. If you look at the chart, you will see, you know, this is when we broke that upper area. That was that outside day, a day to take notice. That's why we always talk about it because look what it led to. And now traders are trying to figure out, was this enough of a pullback? 
you know, we're still above the 200 day. We're still above the previous, you know, support. So I would say if you want to trade long, trade versus 155.27 in the mm -hmm. GLD. But if we start breaking below 155, you're going to see people start pressing some shorts. But that also is dangerous considering where we came from because look at everyone who pressed the shorts in the S&P below 1100. You know, they're in a conundrum right now. So it's a, it's a tricky trade. I think tier one long if you have a long-term thesis in gold. I want to say two things to, in terms of price action. Also, I've heard that 1480 for gold prices is kind of a line in the sand. We're game off. You hmm. really have to rethink stuff. But if you look at Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, 12-month price target, you have Goldman Sachs reiterating its price target at 1860, and Bank of America, 2000. So I just want to point those out. If those price targets are met, I would be very in surprised. In 12 months. In 12 oh, months. 12 months. No, so not the end of uh, right. 2011. Right. All right, 12 months maybe. All right, fair enough. Let's go to some stocks. Want to hit on Newmont and Rand Gold. First, go to Newmont. Ticker is NEM. It has that juicy dividend, tend to be holding up better than other stocks because of it. So let's see what the price action is. Well, Newmont has been an institutional favor. They started to add to it. You still have to time these things well. We talked about it when it broke its downtrend, and then it got a little iffy at the top. If you look at Newmont, you know, yesterday was a decent area to buy. This was hmm. that, you know, the, the downtrend, if you want to take a, a step back and look at it. This is when we first really started to say it started acting better above 59. And then you had a nice move to 70. So you always have to monitor the action. Then you had this inside, you know, bear trap, they call it. And then you really had to get out when it broke this, this uptrend right here. So that was around 66. Now it retested that uh, downtrend, uh, uptrend, downtrend. Anyway, <laughs> you know, if you want to be in one of these, this one has a dividend. I would say you'd be in Newmont. But you know, if you want, if you don't want some risk, make sure you have a stop in at yesterday's low around 58. And to be fair, a lot of gold stocks do have dividends. This one has a sexy one that's tied mm -hmm. to the gold price. So whatever they sell gold for the quarter before, that's the average price. That's what they pay out in dividends. So anything over two thousand dollars for gold price is going to be pretty juicy. But we're not probably not going <laughs> to get there this quarter now. All right, and then let's go to the risk. Let's go to Rand Gold ticker G O L D. Have been holding up really well, basically on some fundamentals. Had some really good Q uh, second quarter results. Uh, what are you seeing? Well, here you go with a GOLD. This one, you know, a little bit more speculative than obviously than a Newmont. It had a really good move when it broke above 90, you know, and this was your, you know, area to really watch. When it couldn't get above this 115, when gold started to come down, you had to say, I better get out of the way if it breaks this mini uptrend. And it broke 105. That was your out, you know, if you didn't sell into some of the strength. And mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. it's trying to hold the re that, that, that prior area. So if you want to be long this one, if you want some minor exposure, make sure you're long and put a stop, I would say, around 90. There is some room, you know, to, to maybe get back up to that 105. And then wrapping this segment up, segment up, I just want to touch on silver really quickly. Has obviously not been a favorite with retail investors. Is it a cute trade now for you? I think silver is just showing so much relative weakness compared to gold. They tried to rally it, you know, when gold was actually acting well. And then as soon as gold broke, silver broke harder. If you take a quick look at silver, it, it looks like lower prices here. It's, it's desperately trying to hold on to this range. It's a tough short, but I would say if you're looking for a long, you better have a long-term time horizon. And if you, you know, if you don't want to have much risk, use this 28 on SLV as your stop. Yep, fair enough. You have to wonder what price though does industrial demand start to kick in at cheaper prices. So we'll have to watch and out half. for that. 25 and a half. There All right, go. there you go. <laughs> we'll be right back after this with oil, other commodities, and some quick ways to make some cash. Stay with us. When the closing bell rings, it's not quite time to run off to happy hour. Good afternoon, Scott Redlet, T3 Live. Welcome to today's recap. Before unwinding, take stock of the trading day. What's the complexion of the market? Which trade from the morning call triggered? What sectors are in play? And where will the opportunities be tomorrow? Scott Redler covers it all in the T3 Live Daily Recap video. The T3 Live Daily Recap airs every day after the close. As far as this market's concerned, you know, we got to take off those glasses. All right, we're back. We're going to go into oil here now. A WTI hitting a low for 2011 on Tuesday. Now we're bouncing today. I spoke to one trader, Ray Carbone at the NYMEX yesterday, who said any rally here, any rally whatsoever, is going to be short covering. What do you think about that? Well, we bounced off of that 75 area. Short-term double bottom at 75. That's your stop. Resistance 79 to 81. That's this new little range. I do also think that oil has been heavy. Mm -hmm. It could go lower. I think it's not a compelling trade. I'd rather watch oil and then see if there's some trades in the ETF, the OIH. All right, let's go to the OIH because in terms of oil, the, you know, Carbone also told me that they, we could hit a low of 64 and then Goldman's price target is like 96 for the next couple of months. So huge range. So how can you play that volatility with the OIHs? Well, OIHs have been weak and we've talked about trying to get a Q trade in. We try to trade there. Last week it lasted a day and a half. Let's see if this one could last longer. This has been a, a very weak group. So let's see if it can start to act better. Take a look at the chart here. You will see that when it was in this lower range, 
This broke to the downside well before the markets. And then you've had continuation to the lows. But yesterday, you saw a very potent outside day where you made a new low, came back closed strong. We saw that here, but if you remember, it lasted for a day and a half. So the question is, can you get some follow through? I think you can get some follow through on here up to about 107. Mm -hmm. And if the OHs could actually do some sideways work and not violate this like 100 area and go sideways, you could see something a bit more sustained if we get a fourth quarter move. So if you're long, trade it versus yesterday's low, and we'll see if we could actually add to it. So would you add to it here if, if you hadn't gotten long? If you hadn't gone yeah. long, what I would do is wait for a little bit of a pullback okay, okay. and see if it holds at least 50 to 75% of yesterday's move. That's where you get long. You know, it, you, you could probably make some money today because you do get a day two at times. Same way you could have made money a week ago on it, but it's obviously a big tricky trade once you have such a huge travel range like you saw from yesterday's low to the close. All right, let's go to three individual stocks in the OIH. I want to go to Halliburton, Schlumberger, and Baker Hughes. So Halliburton up more than 6% yesterday, Baker Hughes up about 2%, and Schlumberger up almost 2.5%. These are kind of juicy moves. Is there a favorite trade among those three? I looked at the charts before, and they actually look just like the OHs mm -hmm. with a little bit more beta because obviously, you know, the individual stocks have more to go. If you look at Halliburton first, you take a look here, same type of scenario. It broke this longer term trend line. This was your area to get out or retest it. This was another area to watch, and it broke. And now you have a huge potent reversal day. So if you got long at around 28.64 yesterday, congratulations. If it does, hold above 30, you have some room back to 35, but I don't think you need to be in all of these because right, I'll right. show you like Schlumberger, look at this chart pattern, looks you know exactly the same. Schlumberger, big move, broke 80, broke 70, big reversal yesterday. Sometimes it leads to a better trade. This will have some resistance around 61, but if it could hold above, just say 55, or not even 55, 57 or so, you could see a bigger move back to 70 at some point this year. So yesterday was a decent entry if you weren't long any of these. All right, 20 seconds. Does Baker Hughes have some catch-up potential here? Let's take a quick look. I bet you it looks just like the other ones. Let's just see. Oh, what a surprise. <laughs> okay. New lows yesterday, closed strong. I would go with the OAHs and maybe one of these stocks, whichever one's your favorite. All right, fair enough. Let's go to some quick ways to make some cash. We've got to go to Apple. So, Scott, sinking about 2.5% during the product announcement yesterday. It was pretty intense, and then was able to rally from there with the broader market. Hmm. How would you be trading it today? I know you got stopped out yesterday. <laughs> I got stopped out at the 100 day, went down to the 200 day. I was actually on B. Sullivan's show. I talked about 350, 355, an area to buy it. It went to 354, then rallied back to 372. I think it's going to have to digest that volatility from yesterday. I think if you're long from yesterday, hold. If you're looking to buy it and missed it, I would say as long as it holds above, just say like 365 and takes the majority of that move, you can get in. But I think it needs a few days to digest. All right, fair enough. Let's go to Yum Brands uh, reporting Q3 prop, uh, solid Q3. Q3 profit on strong China sales. I finally got that out. So stock was up about 2% yesterday. Ahead of the news, how would you be playing it? I'm sure you don't want to chase it here. I'll take a quick look because okay. I normally don't trade it, but it's something that guys want because of the dividend. You know, it also, big move from the high from 55. This was your day to take notice. You know, came into support, reversed. Some guys would have gotten long when it crossed the back above that 48, 41. It's got some room to 51, 52. It's investment quality, but it's, it's not so compelling. All right, how about compelling? Let's talk about Lululemon up about 6% yesterday. Now what? <laughs> <laughs> well, Lulu got crushed. It went from the highest to the lowest so quick. I hate on quick hits to always show you the chart because you get mad at me. But I this do, was your true. day to take notice. <laughs> this one broke this ascending channel. So yesterday was your reversal. It has some room back to about 50 to 53 before you get some massive resistance. Now, Coke was on the list, too, that you're trading, which was surprising. It's a consumer staple, probably pretty boring. Why are you trading this one? Uh, well, they came out and they lowered their, what, what did they lower? They lowered their revenue. They lowered, they lowered their numbers, which is very surprising for Coke. And people thought that Coke's been safe because of the dividend. But I wanted to show you that even, you know, everyone's talking about the big dividend. But when you get a huge percentage move like you saw in Coke, you know, it, it, it could hurt. So yeah. it's defenseless. But you had a reversal. They, they priced it in. So that's good. It's out of the way. You could see a move back in Coke to about 68 to fill this gap for cash flow. And then it's going to need some time, obviously. We're not going to see new highs quick. All right, 30 seconds. Two stocks. Caterpillar finally getting a bounce of 3%. Now what? This stock has been so battered and bruised. Everyone loves it. And at this point, they probably hate it a bit. This also, I'm sure, it had a reversal. There you go. Nice reversal yesterday. Has some room to about 75 to 79 to try and reclaim this broken support. That was your last exit right around there. All right, Las Vegas Sands, about 6% Tuesday. LVS showed relative strength yesterday. I tried playing it. There were some decent account numbers. That and win got destroyed. But they're at the bottom ends of the ranges. They have some room. I think LVS 
could probably get back to 42, and wind could probably get back up to 125, 135 before you see some massive resistance. All right, wrapping it up, we have a lot. We have a big test day. It's going to be a big week, and you know what? Even bigger because Friday's jobs number, something we haven't even talked about. You can stay in light, being flexible, headed into the number. Well, let's see how we act from here till Friday. If we continue to rally into Friday, Friday better be a good number. If we go sideways and, and we just stick around here, it's not going to have to be that robust. I'm hoping just for the U.S. state, you know, that jobs are okay. I, I just don't see how we're going to have a great number. I think they're expecting plus 50,000 and 9.1 to stay the same. I wouldn't be surprised if, if it's a little less than that. And even 50,000 isn't that great. So Don't we need like 250 mind. just to... It's like 200,000 per month for even to keep stable or something very dramatic like that. All right, that's it for us for today. Happy hump day, everybody. Good luck trading. Stay flexible. I'm Alex Steele from The Street. And I'm Scott Rutherford from T3. Join us on the virtual trade floor and in the chat. You know, when news hits like you so yesterday at 315, it's always good to have a few thousand eyeballs versus two. <laughs> well, I'll see you to recap. Have a good day.